Windows 10's end of support could be a massive issue, here's why. Windows 10 is set to stop receiving any new updates from October the 14th 2025, and onwards, so after the state, Microsoft will no longer provide technical support, warranty, or release any new bug fixes or security patches for Windows 10, and there does not seem to be anything suggestive of an extended security updates program, like what we had for Windows 7. Windows 10 as an operating system is scheduled to lose support in less than two years away from the time of this video being produced. With over half the entire world using Windows 10 as of October 2023, things are not going to change rapidly anytime soon, so Microsoft should really get round to letting us know if they are going to extend the deadline for Windows 10 end of support, because far too many people are using it and we have less than two years until the deadline has come to us, and once we've reached that deadline, that's it, no more security or bug fixes, no more support from Microsoft, and worst of all, major software and hardware developers will quickly drop support in favor of a new version that is supported, such as Windows 12, so you Windows 10 users have to plan ahead a contingency plan as to what you're going to do, because Microsoft hasn't given you an easy way out. They also have not made it official as to whether or not Windows 10 will see extended support past the October 14, 2025 deadline, so in the end, you're either going to have to save up and purchase a new PC or laptop running Windows 11 or later, or you will have to find an alternative OS to use, and a big problem that comes with switching systems is losing access to a large library of software and games, a shit ton of that is Windows only, with no well-known equivalents for Mac, Linux, BSD, etc., and sometimes, the free equivalents are not enough for some people, they need that specific function or feature that Microsoft Office has, or maybe they need something Photoshop has that GIMP simply does not, and some software does not have any alternative to it at all, which is the hardest bit about switching to Linux or another OS as you have to get used to using the software that is written for that OS, so either buckle up and be prepared to upgrade to Windows 11 or Windows 12, or make the jump to Mac OS, Linux, or whatever system it is you're interested in migrating to. Windows 10 has enjoyed a massive and very lengthy lifespan compared to its predecessors, Windows 8 and 8.1 which were a massive flop thanks to the redesigned start menu, which was confusing for desktop users to say the least, but Windows 10 was aiming at fixing what 8 and 8.1 had started, and it did that quite well, but it also drew major concern over privacy, as Windows 10 has quite a bit of dirty data collection tactics bundled into it, and now with Windows 11, your data can at any time be accessed by an unknown third party, yes. Windows 11 does send your system info and personal info to third parties, in case you didn't know, and this is not a lie, and what we could see in Windows 12 will be far worse thanks to tight integration with the artificial intelligence features that will make it 10 times easier for Microsoft to collect and sell your personal data, and harvest the shit out of your users, and guess what, this too will not be easy, in fact, impossible to disable so you will be stuck with the system that is monitoring your every move and sending all that so-called important data back to Microsoft, when in fact Microsoft could easily have access to your very sensitive stuff, maybe you look at naughty content or whatever, do you really want them seeing that and potentially sending it to law enforcement only for you to be found guilty of crime you did not personally commit? That's the reality of Windows 12 guys. It could quite literally make it much much easier for both Microsoft and the police to enact on basically non-existent crimes that you personally did not commit. All that aside, as sad and unfortunate as all of this is, you cannot do nothing about it, because you, me, and everyone else is powerless, we are beholden to these corrupt corporations because we do not have a choice but to use the substandard shit we are served from day one. That is unless of course you use Linux and escape that whole corporate control bullshit, although you're still somewhat beholden to using corporate software, especially when it comes to web browsers, but Linux is not for the majority of people, most people struggle to even do basic tasks like send emails, so do you really expect that someone like that, in other words, an idiot, 
to be able to use Linux, no, quite obviously not, and while Linux is free, open source, more secure, and it's better towards user privacy, that's not enough of a reason for most people to switch, as I have said once before, Linux must have a very compelling reason for the majority to switch, and there ain't no compelling and big reason for everyone to do so, so you Linux users can keep grapping on Windows and tell everyone to switch to Linux, but all you're really doing is mindlessly preaching to the converted and converting, and that's all you're ever going to reach, so get a grip on reality and deal with it. Linux will never become the dominant system on desktops, and no amount of you telling anyone and everyone to switch to Linux is going to help Linux grow in market share. This is only happening thanks to Microsoft treating their users like absolute shit, and some people are finally becoming aware of the ever-increasing surveillance these companies put in their systems, so these users wish to gain more privacy, a more stable and reliable system, and that's great and all. But you must remember that Linux just won't work or be for everyone, and the learning curve alone is enough to stop people from even trying it, and if you really want people to become aware of the benefits of using Linux, you would first and foremost need to educate the majority of people, and how exactly can you do that? Not easily, because not everyone is prepared to learn Linux. Here is a really big issue that still seems to haunt Linux to this day. Thanks to the lack of business standard software supporting Linux, as well as the troublesome hardware support for Linux, this hinders it from growing and reaching more users. However, if you become increasingly aware of Linux and its benefits, you may never want to go back to using Windows or Mac OS, because Linux does offer lots of advantages, but there also comes its fair share of disadvantages, and the learning curve is definitely one of the disadvantages, as Linux even the easiest distro to use. Linux Mint can be challenging for someone who has never even heard of Linux before, so just keep these things in mind when you tell somebody to switch to Linux, because you're really preaching to the converted one doing this, or preaching to those who wish to convert, and that's about the largest amount of people you can ever wish to get on Linux. Aside from the converted and converting, you cannot make anyone else switch, because too many people rely on proprietary paid for software that either itself is not natively available on Linux, or there is a free equivalent, or lack thereof, that maybe has almost all of the same features and functionality, but as mentioned earlier, most people use Microsoft Office or Photoshop because they know that the free equivalents, despite how good they are, they refuse to use them. Because for one, most people cannot fathom how FOSS software can and sometimes is better than paid for software. And for two, most people are happy to pay their subscriptions, unless their finances are tight, and they do not want to miss out on specific features. So this is why you cannot tell everyone to switch to Linux and use free and open source software. I know I do this to some extent, but I am wanting to help those who really want to make the switch. That's why I make videos on tips and tricks, as well as guides, on how to switch to Linux. But far too often do I come across other content creators who say things like, Oh, even idiots can use Linux. I have not heard anything more hilarious whilst at the same time very stupid at any time in my life. You cannot get people to start using Linux when they are kids. That's a really stupid and bad idea. I mean, it could work. But is Python and writing scripts of interest to a young kid? No, the kids these days want video games and a large chunk of proprietary software. So no amount of preaching about switching to Linux is going to get those kids to switch, you dumb idiots. Please don't say stupid things like that, otherwise, I, as well as lots of other potential people, will rightfully criticize your stupid belief, and I have absolutely no problem in doing so. And I bet you a lot of my viewers would also agree that Linux is just not for everyone, and thanks to the lack of major software and hardware support, we will never ever see a year of the desktop, that's just a repeated meme that's starting to lose its memeness, if you know what I mean. With the end of support for Windows 10 drawing closer, users of Windows 10 will have to start planning ahead, whether they go down the upgrade path, which ultimately will be the most expensive path or switching to an alternative OS. Now I am not recommending Mac OS because it too is paid for proprietary software. 
and by far a long way off from my recommended list. Instead, I would recommend Linux Mint as a free operating system for those of you who are sick of Windows and really want to switch to Linux, because Linux Mint is easy to use. It runs really well even on lower-end hardware. You can customize the system to your liking in every aspect of the system, and you're free from any bloat, spyware, adware, etc., and there is no included telemetry or tracking with Linux Mint. Don't believe me. Go and read up on the official Linux Mint website. The team of developers clearly state that Linux Mint doesn't have dirty tracking methods bundled into it, and it has to be the best beginner-friendly Linux distro out there in my opinion, due to the fact that it really is easy to use, and it shows that Linux really is becoming a viable alternative to Windows and Mac OS, given that you are prepared to ditch proprietary software for good. What do you think of the end of support for Windows 10? Do you think Microsoft should extend support? Let us all know what you think down in the comments section below. Please remember to like, share, comment, and subscribe. See you next video. Bye for now.